not what I expected to see when I go out to see a uh, aquarium manufacturer, an emu. Hello friends, Ben Ochart here, and today we're going to take a road trip to Glass Cages in Dixon, Tennessee. And uh, you can see here we're in the forests of Dixon, Tennessee. And uh, Glass Cages made a, a stand and a rimless tank for me that you're going to see featured in some upcoming videos. And uh, in speaking with Joe, one of the co-owners, we decided that I should go down and uh, take a tour of the place. And uh, I was very, very surprised at what I saw and what I ran into. And there really is no uh, tank project that they can't undertake. It starts by filling out an online form and getting an estimate of what you like to have done. And then, of course, working out the details with the staff over at Glass Cages. They can pretty much do any kind of tank, a rim tank, a rimless tank like the one they made for me, special sizes, special dimensions, as you'll see as we take a tour through their tank building facility. They can even do sumps and work in glass and acrylic. Let's go ahead and start the tour and see what they've got going on out here. All right, so I'm here with uh, Joe over at Glass Cages. That's Joe right. is a part owner of Glass Cages, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to give me a tour of the place. We're going to go inside and look around, and uh, I think we've got something in store for us that's a lot more than just uh, tanks, right, Joe? Oh, yeah. We're going to show you the property. We've got right. a lot of things to see. All right, let's go. Yep. Let's go. Glass Cages was actually started by Tom, who, on the orders of his doctor, moved to Tennessee after several heart attacks, some health issues. So he decided to make a major lifestyle change and headed for Tennessee and uh, ended up building a few uh, pet enclosures for his wife. And the end result was he ended up starting a company, Glass Cages, which has produced hundreds and hundreds of aquariums. Today, Tom is pretty much retired and spends his time taking care of the, uh, of the fish that live in the 11 ponds that he built on the property. This one uh, is full of juvenile and some adult koi. Several of them have koi, beautiful koi. Other ponds actually have um, bass and and bluegill and fish that uh, people can come and actually fish on the property. And because it's private property, you don't need a license. You can just go ahead and set up and, uh, and fish away. Of course, you can't fish the koi. <laughs> but uh, Tom now is, uh, is retired and has turned things over to the new owners, which uh, are Joe and Todd, which were originally the providers of glass. They would sell the glass to glass cages. They became acquainted with Tom and his wife, and uh, they liked what they saw, and they went ahead and invested in both the company and the property and everything else that we have going on here, which you're going to see, which actually goes way beyond uh, simply tank building. Let's hear a little bit from Tom about what it is that uh, brought this about. So, Tom, I heard the story. You, you sold everything in Chicago and came down south. Yeah, I, I got, yeah. I had a heart attack and that's what brought me down. Yeah, that's something that... Uh, and I got to restart everything. Makes people uh, rethink their life, doesn't it? Yeah, we, we tried a few things and the fish tanks took off. Nice. So, uh, and then several other things, as you can see. Nice. Um, so now you... Um, You've stepped back a little bit and let, let Todd and Joe kind of run things? It's theirs to run completely. There you go. Uh -huh. So it's a pretty industrial looking property here. 
in uh, Dick, Dixon County, Joe? Yes, Dixon County. Dixon County, Tennessee, and this is Joe. He's gonna give me a, Joe helped me with my stand and my tank, and he's gonna give me a tour on this vehicle here through the property. They uh, not only make tanks and stands, but they also have fishing, so I can come here and fish. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and go. Let's go. The upper industrial section uh, quickly turned into some dense and beautiful forest. On the way down, we um, rode past some of the equipment that Tom had acquired and used to uh, actually build some of the ponds that are on the property. Are those your solar panels? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we've got rural and very modern at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's a good mixture. Yeah, the drive out here is beautiful. It is. Now what it's do we got chicken here? Coop. Chicken coops. We have about 130 chickens. 130 <laughs> chickens. All right. Fishing area. There's a total of 11 ponds on the property. And uh, these ponds were uh, dug out using that equipment by Tom. They drain into each other. And uh, it's quite, quite a setup. I might just be coming back here to do a little fishing myself. But we had to get in past the fence, which holds the cattle in. The cows busted out of their pen. So now they're on this side of the property. So we're uh, now what do you do? Up. What do you do with this cattle? Oh, they they mow the grass. They mow for, okay. <laughs> There's four of them. And uh, just a, just we a rent trailers house. also. We have a whole bunch of trailers. We rent people come pick them up. And, Wow, for, this is a good size. This is beautiful, Rob. We got 88. So all these ponds are stocked with catfish, bluegill, largemouth bass, and striped bass. Last week, Tom caught a 20-pound cat on the pond up over on the other way over there. So Tom built all the ponds. They were not here. They were not here originally. Really resourceful. So Tom's a builder. Mm -hmm. He built this bridge by hand. See the one up there? That's what that car is going to drive over. He and built the that. Okay. Nice. So this one's a more shallow pond. Stock, stock of the same kind of fish. This one goes all the way up over that way, but all in that whole ridge right there is about 40 to 50 feet deep, and then it has this uh, slow incline. I'm catching in the summertime, that is a hot bed for bass. 40 to 50 feet deep on the far side. Right there, yeah. And then it comes up real quick. Wow. But there's a ledge or a cliff, and that's all dammed. This used to go down. That goes to the interstates on the other side of the other hill. I stand right on that little perched area there and just cast out. Wow. It's awesome. Use lures or bait? Lures all the time. Wow. Well, definitely not what I expected for uh, <laughs> aquarium manufacturing. <laughs> I told you. I said, you got to come, man. This is wild stuff. Certainly not what I expected, but still a, a beautiful setting. And uh, what a great place. What a great place to have a, a place of business on 80 acres with 11 ponds, a variety of, uh, of livestock, chickens, donkeys, an emu, and uh, certainly not the, the conventional manufacturing setup but I can only imagine this is like one of those only in Tennessee type of businesses. Quite, quite amazing, actually, when you think about it. So Tom has all this property. And one day he built a cage for his wife. Turns out OK. And he starts this business. Mm -hmm. Now, when did, you, when did you get with glass cages, Joe? Two years ago. Two years ago? Two years ago. Todd and I 
um, we're supplying glass to glass cages as a, as a supplier and we got to know Tom and Beth over a couple of years and they were at the place of retiring and we had a good relationship so it worked out it was real fun so are you moving into or already in an ownership position oh yeah we bought the company you bought it from him. okay yep. Absolutely. so he just stays on the property and yep I live in Florida part of the here. deal and Todd has moved up here nice fun stuff man. Fun. so so Todd and you pretty much are the guys that run the show okay. now nice so you went from a glass supplier to owner of the company and with that came the property uh, we have a portion of the property I get it so yep. so he held on to some of that There's a, everything's commingled I get it yeah nice this is amazing out here. And out here is where they collect moths in this little section here because it's a major migration path. How's that for a fish video? Let's go see some more. Oh, yeah. Now here's a bridge that Tom built, the founder of Glass Cages. Built this by hand. And we're gonna risk riding over it. <laughs> You put the gate up to keep the cows in. And a cow, three cows and a donkey. Four cows and three donkeys. Four cows and three donkeys. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and how many chickens? The donkeys are great. Man. They, they protect everything. So this was a tractor barn that got yeah. converted into a massive fish room. Well, rooms. Rooms, multiple rooms. <laughs> it's yeah. It's a lot. It's upstairs now. It's All right, at least let's go. I'll follow you. I was shocked to see hundreds of aquariums on several floors containing what must have been a thousand or more fish. But this is really a, a topic for a video at a different time. But you can imagine. And what shocked me is how these aquariums had so much algae that had built up, which Tom is working on, and but yet the fish were all strong and healthy. I even picked one up to bring home with me, a fish I've been looking for for quite a while. I was quite surprised at what was going on here, and I'll definitely be taking a trip back to document this. Hey, buddy. What's hopping? Well, that's a pretty frog. I wonder how big he gets. It's a... Uh... It's two thirty one. It's two. I, it's two thirty one. I got. I, I got here at, at one o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock. One o'clock, right. and and so far I, I bought a fish. Yes, right here. I bought a fish. I've seen a thousand fish. Named it Tom. And it, we named it Tom. I, I've seen an emu, and uh, donkeys, cows. Uh, we drove by two hundred chickens or something. A donkey, a cow, ponds. Five, eleven ponds. Yeah. I have and I have uh, uh, Okay. <laughs> And I haven't even seen a single tank manufacturing area yet. No. So we're going to no. go do that now. Oh, we went to the fish house too. Oh, we saw the fish That's house. Right. That's 75, right. 000 fish uh, and uh, 300 tanks. All right. That's Let, right. Let's go see where they make aquariums. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's start a tour of where all the magic happens here. Absolutely. And uh, how, many, how many tons of glass you said we have here? 140 tons. 140 tons of glass. There's no glass shortage here. Here. Oh right. Okay. No. No glass shortage. Shortage. There's no right. glass. There's Everybody's no glass. No glass tank, shortage here. Get a tank, but we have. To, we can build them. Okay. And you've got glass in a variety of uh, thicknesses. Yep. Tints. Tints. We're gonna go through. All this. this is neat. If you come back over this way, look at the edge. This is regular glass. Uh huh. And then if you go over this one, this is low iron. You can. If you stand back here. You can clearly see the difference between the two. Oh yeah, you know I could tell that difference on my tank, the front panel. Mm -hmm. So this is low iron, yep. and this is regular. That's regular. Yeah, look how dark that is. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Now, how does low iron compare to acrylic in its uh, see-through? Well, when an acrylic tank is new, it's the clearest. Acrylic is the clearest. <laughs> because then it starts to get scratched, right? Oh, then the scratch. All, yeah. Then all the scratching. So. Yeah. But, now this so machine we, here can we lift. Use this? as a, uh, a vacuum hoist to move each sheet of glass to the cutting table. Right here. Cutting table comes up vertical, slides the glass on it, table goes back down. It's kind of an air hockey effect with uh, when you turn on the air so you can move the glass, score, and cut. 
All this glass over here has been cut for a tank. All, all this is for t all this here in this section. Yeah. So everything here is for tanks that have been ordered. You're saying? Yeah. Very nice. Now you're saying this uses air to float, so you could have a thousand pound piece of glass on here, and you could just push it around because it's floating on air. It's amazing. That's exactly right. Crazy. That is crazy. Crazy. All right. Let's go. And this is all committed. This is all glass that is committed to tanks that you're building. Right here, yep. None of this has been polished. This is magic. Now we're in the magic section? This is the polisher. Oh, OK. This now, when you say polisher, glass. it polishes like the, the edge, the entire surface, or oh, the edges. edges. So the edges are not hand polished, per se. They're, they're done by a machine. Here you go. Look at this. This is Nick. Look up here. Look up this. Look up top. See how it's polished? Okay, so this is not something you can cut yourself on now. Because mm -mm. it's been all cleaned up. Mm -hmm. I like it. This is an awesome polisher. We have a second one we're putting up, so we'll be running dual polishers. Two polishers. Mm -hmm. So anybody really can get a tank right now. There's no shortage of tanks. Not here. Now, how many people will be working this floor at any given time? We have about 18. 18 employees. Ooh, that's a nice polish stage on blue iron. Really nice. Very, very good. Another one of your uh, massive hoists. This is what we call this a mule. We have two of them. So this is on wheels, so we can pick up a huge sheet of glass and roll it through the whole shop. That's how we. So you have two, mu the two mules and four donkeys. Well, instead of taking four four guys to pick up an eight hundred eight hundred pet, we can use this one person. It's pretty cool. One person can lift. Okay. This is cool. The top bottom drill press when we're drilling holes in glass. Oh, nice. So we drill. It starts drilling the bottom, and then yeah. the top will come down right on top. So this gives you a very it's clean. A yeah, very clean. You don't see it splining on the outside. Yeah. So you can order your tanks pre-drilled. Yep. Very nice. You guys don't do anything in acrylic. It's all glass. I'll show you acrylic. Oh, you do acrylic yes, too? Sir. Oh, I didn't know that. So here's a couple of tanks in the process. You see the holes are drilled. These are all Euro braced. So these are drilled tanks that are Euro braced. And they're just you're just waiting for the the glues adhesives to dry. Yep, the silicone. This is regular glass, and this is low iron. Low iron. You can see the difference between the two. Nice. So you also do small mm -hmm. tanks. It's not just all big monster tanks. But look at this! Look at this beast right here. This has uh, got to be what 300 gallons. There you go. We have one over here. It's about 500. 500 gallons over here. That one's uh, almost ready to deliver. Yeah. Another turtle tank. We do an all-in-one turtle tank with a ramp and a platform. And this this, this uh, customer wanted a divider in the tank. So it's a removable divider because the two turtles don't always get along. Oh, that's interesting. So therefore, we don't have to have a separate tank. We can do one tank and they can uh, isolate it. And you customized it for the uh, the European bracing you have at the bottom. Absolutely. And then the holes. So the turtle bottom. tank with like these incredible ramps. This is like a, uh, a Royal Cruise Line <laughs> sure type is. of a. Amazing. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> now this one over here, I notice, has an overflow box made of glass. Yes. Interesting. I like that. Now this is no doubt going to be a salt water application. Yes, it is. Can we make an acrylic cover for this? And I'll show you when we get into the QA department. So the fish don't go flopping That's down right. into the it sump. Has, it has the weir. The so you have, you put a weir on it. You have a large overflow box. And then I notice you have two large, at least two, maybe three inch holes drilled. That's for a closed loop system on this tank. Very nice. And this will get Euro bracing. This tank was assembled on Thursday. Beautiful. Now you say this tank is special. Yeah. Why, why is this tank special, Joe? Oh. There you go. The tinted smoked glass around the top. Oh, look at that. Around the top. So we have a smoked glass Euro brace. This is sort of like a. Uh, it's a show tank. A bit of a Ferrari of an aquarium. We use low iron for the cross braces. Low iron for the cross brace. Yeah, so low iron. Does that make it stronger, or just for no, visibility? No, just for clear. Just for okay. property of this. The other thing that we've done 
is this is a trimless tank. Yeah. See this tank? It has trim. Yeah. This is trimless, so we put the concealed water line on the inside. Oh, I like that, because I know using a sump sometimes, you're not really always to the top. That's right. So that's really nice to conceal the water line, because if you didn't do that, then you would see the water line. And this tank is a trim tank, in contrast. This one has metal. Black trim. And yeah. this doesn't have low iron cross brace. And you can see the difference. You know what I like about that low, low iron crossbar is that you're going to have less less uh, blockage of your light source. That's true. People, like they pay a fortune for their uh, lights, then they block them with whatever they have at the top of their tank. It's really nice. Now, what is that right there? That's about 180, maybe more. Oh, yeah, this is 72. This is 180. He's got low iron all the way around or low on iron three? Low iron all the way around. Oh. Low iron cross braces. Tinted, smoke tinted glass. It's tinted. It's not vinyl wrap. Yeah. So the, the glass is actually, when it's made, it's tinted. Some of that you showed me on the rack. Yep. Nice. All right, what have we got here? Oh, this is a sample tank. A sample tank. It has tank. a little bit of everything on it. So we start with the trim. We have a black trim. Yeah. The white trim that we also have. For the bracing, this is cool. We're highlighting bronze glass. Bronze glass. It's tinted bronze. Then we have tinted smoke here. Tinted green. So this to give a person a sample of everything you can, Every, that's possible. That's right. This is a regular cross brace, regular yeah. glass, and this is low iron cross brace. You can see the difference real quick. Yeah. It's a lot, lot greener. This is pretty much, yeah, that's very see-through. And then this piece of glass right here, you can see it's frosted. Yeah. So we, we have a white frosted. Kind of cool match with the, the white trim. And then in the inside, you can, all of our tanks have an interior bottom brace. Yeah. And we're highlighting both clear and black silicone on this tank. So we have, um, here we have the white, the way the white silicone looks. Mm -hmm. And then the side, the black, way, we have the black this silicone. Is, this panel is low iron and this panel is regular glass. So low iron, like the front of my tank that you made for me. <clears throat> and if we go around, you can see the darker green of the regular glass. And so you, you can disguise the sand line with a black. Down the bottom, yep. It's an inch and a half up. And you can disguise the water line right here. with a black stripe. Yep. If the, if the customer wants it. So, so if you did the white or the black trim, that does the water line as well. But that's pretty cool stuff. Very cool. Very cool. All in one. We're just having fun with glass. That's We're the glass people. Just fun <laughs> that, that'd be the tank that you take with you, like if you were going to a show or something. I imagine. Yeah, it's an awkward 25 pounds of love ground, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless you make a little pocket size one. It's cool. <laughs> so the yeah. section we're walking into is the, is the quality control section. We do inspection. We verify seams. We verify uh, seam work. They get cleaned. We verify dimensions, hole location, um, everything about what was specified for that particular tank. And so this is prior to shipping. So this tank, the tanks that are here are on the last stage of manufacturing. That's right. They're pre, pre-delivery. And look at the size of this beast right here. This is what, uh, 10 feet, maybe 12? This is a 10 foot. 10 foot tank. Mm-hmm. 30, 30. 30, 30. And this tank has uh, got an overflow on that side. Yeah, and you've got some... And uh, this is a, this, he wants a river action in this one. Oh, interesting. So this is all inlet. So inlets here that'll be blasting water across, which then gets taken down into this overflow. Two overflow covers there, you can see the weird. Yeah. And the sump that's underneath it is going the opposite direction. So that'd be a weird so system. A big circle. Nice. It's pretty cool. Almost like a closed loop, you're saying? Yeah. So this tank is very close to delivery. Uh, this will be probably shipped next week. And uh, we do other things over here in this area. Come on, come over here by me, Ben. I'll get around the back. This tank has black vinyl um, that we wrap it. We can wrap a, any customer's image they want or a company logo or whatever we can print. Nice. But the primary color that everybody picks is black and so, then a royal blue. So we could put a, uh, a Ben O'Cyclid uh, Absolutely. on the back of a tank. Absolutely. <laughs> that's funny. And we also have these overflows with the Synergy Reef overflow. That's a kit. Instead of having the big overflow box, yeah. you can have one of these. 
Okay. It'll hang on the uh, like I like I hang on back. Yep, where it's drilled right here. Yeah, I, I've I've got uh, one from Aesop right now. Yep, Aesop now, has. Now, why are these in a tent? Uh, they're ready for getting vinyl on them. Less dust. Okay, so they're getting wrapped for delivery. Mm -hmm. So those are even closer to being delivered. Yeah. This is the uh, island of tanks. Tank Island. <laughs> These are tanks that were, um, orders were canceled or? This one right here. We made an extra one. Inventory. And this one's ready to go. You can go either fresh or salt. It's low iron all around, black tr or uh, white trim. How many gallons it's, is that? It's a uh, 72, 24, 28 tall. It's a beautiful it's tank. It's an odd bench. I don't have that. So we have to custom make a, a stand for it. The footprint. This has little iron cross braces too. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. What would you guys sell that that for, you think? To a family member. <laughs> so these tanks are customer pickup. Yes. That are waiting against this wall. And these are some that are probably going to be all delivered. This, all this over here is ready to be palletized. All right. And when you say palletized, you palletized. put on a pallet and put in a truck and yes, off, it off it goes. Wow. So we make some neat stands. This is a, a red oak, modern, pushed open. They have slow stop doors. Very pretty. It is a really nice. Red oak? It's a red oak. They want to do it with a, a dark uh, walnut. Really um, pretty. This is, this is a popular color, it's royal blue. We do a lot of royal blue. For an overflow? Overflow as well as wrapping. Nice. Yeah, I see those in, in uh, stores a lot. Mm -hmm. They use the royal blue background. Here's another sand. This is, this is the one, uh, this is that fine furniture one that's painted black. I think a friend of mine in Nolensville, a guy named John, mm -hmm. he got a black stand from you. Okay. Well, you he, he liked it a lot. Also. You do steel? Yeah. This you, stand is for that tank in there that had the white trim. This is that a 10 giant, foot stand. Wow. You need something like this to hold that much water. It's safe that way. Yeah. That's for sure. And the way you've treated it, it looks like it's never going to corrode. It's powder coated and has leveling feet on the bottom. It's, it's a, that's a stout stain. Top of the line. This is a cool tank right here. It has an overflow on both sides. And we call that the coast to coast on the exterior. This tank is going to be viewable on both long sides through a wall. Almost like a peninsula. Mm -hmm. So you're going to run the uh, Herbies? I'm not sure how they're plumbing it. This is their spec. That's how they so they gave you the specs. And we built it. And you go low iron on, on front and back, and then a tinted sides. Yeah. We do a drawing, a shop drawing, per their, uh, their specs for approval. And that's what's on this tank. Then they nice. approve it. As it goes through the process, we have, that's our QA checklist. So everything's got to get signed off. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. And this one has a water line line. That's, on, but that's the trim. That's the, but that's the trim, yeah. which I guess also serves as a water Same line. Thing. Yeah. Because See, we got rid of that trim. We didn't have that. We were like, what do we do? We got to hide the yeah. farm. So we came up with that process. Yeah, on that rim list that I got, I was wondering about it, what to do about the water line. If yeah, I do a sump. Rim list, just, yeah, don't do that. That tank in the back there, that was an extra. That one sold. No, oh, the one in the back. This is going to be a big terrarium. There. I was going to say, that, that, that uh, top on there. It has a screen top. Yeah, someone could put a big bow in there or something. Very cool. So I'm glad we could finally get to tanks. <laughs> Look at this, a little tank with an overflow box. Some people like that sump system. Tall tank. Look at that, this tank is, see, for me, that would be almost too much sump for that tank. I mean, too much overflow. Take up so much fish, fish space. Yeah, but, I mean, some, some people the need that. The challenge is, is when we go through and have a discussion, how's the tank going to be set up? If they want yeah. this up against a wall... You know how the overflow kit we saw over there, where you could put it on the back? Yeah. You get a lot of space in the tank, yeah. but you can't put your holes that's on the right. bottom of the tank. And that's the challenge. And um, this might be a coral reef or something. That's, that's I mean, right. He needs a lot of movement, yep. even though it's small. Well, amazing. Let's go see some acrylic. Thank you. What's this one's name? Hey, do you know there's a frog over in the next building? 
I also make acrylics, and this is an acrylic sump right here. Acrylic just sump. Just a regular three chamber sump with two water traps or baffles. Here's a whole bunch of tanks. These are all acrylic? All acrylic. So this room that we're in right now is reserved to, to acrylics? Absolutely. These tanks here, you see this corner is bent. Oh, that's nice. I know. Okay, uh, this is bent too, and then on the back, so this is the only one that's glued, and then it's rounded. This table right here behind you, this is our bending table for the acrylic. These are heat elements. Lay the acrylic over it, pull it up, and then we put it over there. Here's a piece that has got dirt. Yeah, I know. The overflow. Uh, <clears throat> you make the overflow cover. Nice. Heat up the acrylic, bending table. There you go. Here's another tank being built. It's like going behind the scenes at Disneyland. Oh, so this is a cool tank. This has a black back for acrylic, and then it has the front bent. For the glue I, I the love back. the rounded uh, corners. Yeah, it, it looks good. I think a Clear for Life was doing that, and uh, that tank was so nice to walk around. And it had, it had uh, glued corners, sharp corners in the back, mm -hmm. but the front was rounded. And it doesn't obscure as much of the view. No. Really that's nice. it for acrylics. There's, we have a lot of words that just came down, but that's the activity we got going right now. Very cool that you're in acrylics. I didn't know that. Joe, that was amazing. It was just so that much was, fun. I amazing. love showing this place. This is incredible. This is this is a lot more than just uh, glass and tanks and acrylic. And uh, I feel like I went to uh, Disney World or something. Or uh, I really. I really, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> oh, well, I'm honored that you came and, and thanks for giving me, gosh, a little over two hours of your time to see everything on the property. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. I, I feel like I have to come back. Like I didn't see it all, but we'll, we'll work something out. Oh, we get you an annual pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I got a fish in the deal. And, That's right. Uh, you sure do. All right. And maybe even an aquarium. We'll, I'll contact you about that. Okay. Thank you. All so right. Much. Thank you, buddy. Thank really you. Appreciate it. All right. Take care, buddy. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, thanks, you. Appreciate cool. it. Thank you, man. That was fun. Yeah, that was a that blast. Was so fun. I, I've never. We love having people come out. Too. Thank yeah. you so much for stopping by. And uh, if you think you're getting something out of the channel and you like the content, hit that subscribe button, the bell, and uh, and that notification icon, and that tells YouTube that you like the channel, and will encourage YouTube to uh, to uh, show the channel to other folks on YouTube like you and I who keep fish. Also, uh, consider stopping by on Saturday for the uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream. It's at 11 a.m. Central. That's 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And we have a great group of fish keepers that get together and talk about all things fish. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye. So now what we'll do is we'll do an outgo. Okay. What's an outgo mean? It means the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> As opposed to the end go. Hey, I, you know, that's two words. End is one word. Let's go. Here we go. <laughs>